How's it going, fellow Detroit Red Wings fans? The expansion draft is in a couple days. The Red Wings have already submitted their protected list. The NHL entry draft is a couple days after that on July 23rd. And then the next big event happens the following Wednesday. And that's when free agency opens up. Last season, the Red Wings signed some big time free agents, adding Bobby Ryan, Nemesnikov, Grice, Troy Stetcher, and more. It's safe to say not many people were expecting to see some of those players sign with the Detroit Red Wings. Well, a whole season has gone by, and now we are looking at the 2021 free agent class, and it definitely has its heavy hitters and its support players. So who are some free agents Steve Weiserman and the Red Wings could look to sign to improve the team and the organization? Let's take a look at the forwards. Obviously, Alexander Ovechkin of the Washington Capitals, who is an unrestricted free agent, is going to be returning to play for the Capitals next season, most likely having the contract ready, just not going to sign until the expansion draft is over so the Caps don't have to protect him in the expansion draft. I would assume the same with Colorado Avalanche captain Gabriel Landeskog, really the biggest free agent that the Red Wings might think to go after, and the player who might want to play in Detroit as well, is going to be Zach Hyman. He played for the Toronto Maple Leafs last year. I'm sure most people know who he is. Hyman earned 15 goals, 18 assists for 33 points in 43 games played last season, playing mostly in Toronto's top six forwards. Hyman is a gritty player who could go on a line with two highly skilled players, very similar to Bertuzzi, and with all the Bertuzzi trade rumors going around, they could likely bring in Hyman to fill in the hole Bertuzzi will leave if he does get traded. Now, his contract is going to be his only downside. He was tremendously underpaid in Toronto and is going to be seeking a big pay raise and a longer contract. Think around four to six years at six million or more. Now that isn't too great for the Red Wings, especially being that they are rebuilding. So his numbers won't be what they were in Toronto. Don't get me wrong, Hyman is a good player and would improve our offense, but that kind of contract, it doesn't seem right. Now if Eisenman can get a deal, which he has been known for getting good deals, Maybe Larkin could persuade Hyman also, since they did play together in the University of Michigan, it wouldn't be that bad of a signing. And definitely would be able to aid with our top six offense that was struggling last season. Another possibility to bring a veteran in that has lots of playoff experience like Paul Stastny or Michael Grundlin. Grundlin seems like he has the makings to be a Nemesnikov type of signing. Stastny has made the playoffs every season since the 2013-14 season, playing for three different teams in that span. If Stastny wants to sign a short-term contract, one to two years, then there shouldn't be a problem. We can also flip him to a contending team at the trade deadline so he can chase the cup and we get draft picks or prospects. The last forward I want to talk about is a free agent who was developed by the Detroit Red Wings and was traded away. That player is Thomas Tatar. Tatar was famously traded away to the Golden Knights for a first, second, and a third round draft pick. And then he was shipped out to Montreal in a trade to acquire Max Pacioretty. Tatar did look at home at first, but struggled last season. With a tight cap and good players coming up in the system, and Tatar only playing five playoff games with the Canadians this season, it's safe to say Tatar will be leaving a free agency. Now, should the Red Wings try to acquire him? Absolutely. Tatar is in no spot to be asking for a lot of money thanks to his last season's performance and awful playoff performance. It could be a very low risk, high reward signing, possibly signing him to a one to two year contract worth one to two million. If he wants more, then let him find work somewhere else. So forwards were a little bit dry, but defense, especially on the left hand side, definitely needs some work. Thankfully, there is some nice pieces out there. But if anything is clear, is that it seems Eisenman does want this team to get better. And I mean right now. Looking at the trade to acquire Letty, he was really only losing a second round pick and some cap space. Don't get me wrong, we love Panic, but changing out Panic for Letty, a left-handed defenseman who is strong in both ends of the ice, will definitely make the team more competitive next season. Regardless, the biggest free agent this offseason is going to be Dougie Hamilton. He is this season's Alex Petrangelo for good reason too. In the past four seasons, no defenseman has scored more goals than Hamilton, and he has been the headliner of a dominant Carolina Hurricanes defensive lineup. This would definitely spark the offense and keep the puck out of the Detroit Red Wings net. But like I said, Hamilton is this year's Petrangelo and will cost a hefty penny. Even with the flat cap, he is likely going to be signed for north of $8 million a year and for a longer contract. Think of five years or more. I don't necessarily think the Red Wings would go after him, especially given he is a right-handed defenseman, which we have plenty of in Sider, Hronik, Stetcher, and more coming up in the system. A better option would be Jamie Alexiak. 
Standing at a massive 6 feet and 7 inches, weighing in at 256 pounds, he is an absolute beast in his own regard and has become a defensive force in Dallas known for throwing big hits. All I'm saying is imagine a defensive pairing of Cider and Alexiak. And you have a defensive force who's going to keep a lot of forwards from doing what they want. Not to mention moving the puck up the ice, he also has playoff experience going to the cup final with the Dallas Stars in 2020 that some of our young defensemen could use. Lastly, for defensemen, we have Alec Martinez. Now, in terms of playoff experience and clutch play, you really can't get much better than Martinez. He did score the cup-clinching goal for the Los Angeles Kings in 2014. Martinez, like Alexiak, is a left-handed defenseman, a position that the Red Wings have spaces for, and no immediate prospects who are challenging for a spot aside from Dennis Chalowski. Eisenman could use some of that cap space to snatch up Martinez to give a good mentor for Hronik and Sider as they develop into top defensemen for the Red Wings. Now, the last free agent I want to focus on is a goalie. I wouldn't say it would be a good idea if Bernier is going to be resigned, but theoretically, if Bernier doesn't resign with the Red Wings, and that's a big if, he has gone on the record saying he does want to return and play in Detroit next season. But theoretically, if Bernier doesn't want to sign with the Red Wings, they could try to get Colorado Avalanche goalie Philip Grubauer. He is in the middle of his prime, being 29 years old with the 5th best save percentage in NHL history with at least 100 games played. With that being said, Grubauer has always played for a playoff team, including most recently the Colorado Avalanche, who had a tremendous season. He finished 3rd in Vesna voting. There's no doubt Grubauer would be a good replacement for Bernier and would be able to come in and be the Red Wings starting goaltender until the Red Wings get their goaltender of the future and then teach and help mentor and develop the next goalie of the future. What do you think? Is there another free agent we miss? Who would you sign and what would their contract look like? Let us know down below. Red Wing Nation was designed to be a community of Red Wings fans that could come together and talk about all things Red Wings. So we want to hear everyone's thoughts and opinions. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button so we make more content you like. And lastly, hit that subscribe button. That way you get notified when we upload a video. Until next time, lights on the red light district.